Good morning. Once again, I want to ask you to open up your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 is a powerful chapter. And maybe we overlook a little bit of what it really means as Paul is writing. Before we get there, I just want to say a couple things. Number one, I am very thankful uh, for uh, time off that we had right after Easter, a chance to be with my family. We went out to the, the coast, uh, got my second son enrolled and ready for school, and so that was just a great blessing. I'm so thankful for, for Owen and for TJ and the message that they brought last week. Didn't they do a fantastic job? I hope you have taken the time. I hope you will make the time to, to give them a word of encouragement and a blessing. Just let them know. If you have been a part of South Fork for a long time, if, if this has been your home for quite some time, you may not know the blessing that it is have two fine speaking young men uh, able to deliver and, and to collaborate on a lesson. But that is a very unique blessing uh, for our congregation. And so I'm thankful for um, the time that they spent, the conversations that we had leading up to this, uh, the, the prayer and the um, research and study that they did to, to make everything uh, just a wonderful day for as we were diving into Philippians chapter 1. I'm so thankful also going back two weeks ago when we were outside. It was a beautiful day like today. Do you remember that? And we were enjoying our, our worship service together. As I've talked to, to many of you over the last two weeks, I continue to hear what a blessing that was just to be back as a, a full family, both early service and second service, uh, participating in a family uh, event like that. But over and over again, I hear this phrase, something about that we were, we were just family. And the way that we interacted, the way that everybody just jumped in and helped was spectacular. And I want to just say thank you so much for all that you did to make that service and that, that Sunday uh, a great blessing. But I want to let you know that the unsung heroes are, are our deacons and their wives and their children. Because they came early and helped us get a lot of the chairs out there. And then as some of you all were coming in, you saw that there were just many people just at work, and so you jumped right in. Right after services, they jumped up, they grabbed the tables, and they started to set them up for lunch, and many of you saw what they were doing, and you just jumped right in. After lunch, they jumped up, and they started cleaning off the tables, taking care of the trash, bringing chair tables and chairs back inside, and many of you all saw that and jumped right in. What a blessing that is to be a part of a family that has servant leaders and members who work together. And so I'm just so thankful for that. Again, if you've been a part of South Fork for a long time, that may just seem normal to you, but that's not normal for a lot of congregations. A lot of people have this entitlement philosophy. Well, I pay my dues. I don't need to. That's the preacher's job or that's the, you know, and they'll shove that off. But this congregation, just the way that everybody uh, chimed in and worked together was such a beautiful blessing. And I am so thankful that we get this opportunity to worship together this morning. I'm glad to be back to be able to share with you. Philippians is one of my favorite books. Uh, and so there, I think there's just so much power and purpose in these four little chapters. And so today we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 2. And the way that I would like to start off looking at Philippians chapter 2 is sharing with you some lyrics to some songs that are not Christian songs, not biblical songs, but maybe you know these, these two songs. This, this first one is by Bruce Hornsby in the range. And I want you to listen to this song lyric that you might know. He sings, standing in line, marking time, waiting for the welfare dime, because they can't buy a job. And the man in the silk suit, he hurries by, and he catches the poor old lady's eyes, and just for fun, he says, get a job. Oh, that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. That's just the way it is. Ah, but don't you believe them said, hey, little boy, you can't go where the others go because you don't look like them. they do. Said, old man, how can you stand to think that way? 
Did you really think about it before you made the rules? He said, son, that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. That's just the way it is. Philippians chapter 2 is going to put a reflector, a mirror in front of us. And before we get to the greatness of Jesus Christ, Philippians chapter 2 is going to help us see who we are. And as it presents the greatness of Christ, Paul is going to give examples of the greatness of Christ in two transformed lives. Oh, that's just the way it is might be how we used to think. But that's not how God really wants us to live. You see, in Philippians 2, there are these two bookends, and one is going to help us to see who we are if we are reflecting Christ. If we really, truly believe the great high honor that is given, the, the highest honor. Scripture will say, Paul will say in just a moment, above all else, Christ is raised. If we really believe that, then our lives are going to be changed. And then he's going to say, in order to see that manifest, I want you to look around you, and if you can't give any examples of brothers or sisters in your world who are living a transformed life, then you're missing it. Because this is how we're supposed to live in light of the grandeur and the greatness of Christ. So he gives us this understanding. And at the end, he talks about Timothy. And the work that he does in, in these two different places, as, in these two different cultures, as he's bridging these gaps, as he's bringing people together, as he's working and laboring in such a beautiful way. He's going to talk about Epaphroditus, this young man who has, as he's going to say, has risked his life. A beautiful phrase there in verse 30. As he has served and ministered and labored alongside with Paul. He is this connection point for this church as they eagerly wait to hear what's going on in the world of Paul. And so the second song that I want to bring to your attention this morning is this familiar song by Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror. Probably many of you could sing this song right off the bat, but listen to this. I'm going to make a change. For once in my life, it's going to feel real good. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make it right. He says, as I turn up my collar, my favorite winter coat, the wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street without enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their need? He goes on to say, I've been a victim of a selfish kind of love. And it's time that I realize that there are some with no home, not a nickel to loan. Could it really be me pretending that they're not alone? I want us to look at Philippians chapter 2. And I want us to see that we are going to be changed or we are going to be solidified, crustified. We are going to miss the greatness of God. Either we are going to accept the greatness of Christ and the transformation of this world that He brings, or we will continue to be the selfish, delusioned individuals that we once were. Paul puts these two bookends together as he amplifies Christ Jesus. Now, this is important for us to remember because the church in Philippi, they needed to see Christ living in their world. They needed to see Christ Jesus living. They've heard about the stories of what happened in Jerusalem. They know about what happened on the cross there, but they need to see Jesus living in their midst right now. And so Paul writes this. Listen, in Philippians chapter 2, I don't want you to look, I want you to listen, because I'm going to read a version that most of you won't have. I want you to hear it in a different tone 
as it goes in a different cadence, I want you to, to go back and look at verses 1 through 8 in just a little bit or when you get home this afternoon. But listen to what he says. If you've gotten anything out of following Christ, if His love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with one another. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Now I want you to think of yourself the way that Christ Jesus thought of Himself. He had equal status with God, but he didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to that advantage of the status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of, of deity. He took the status of a slave and became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was incredibly humbling process. Now, he didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death, crucifixion. See, this church needed to see Christ living in their world. And our world needs to see Jesus living among us. The story of, of this greatness of Christ is going to either transform us or it'll just separate us from the world. We will be a bunch of hypocrites that hold to this higher claim but yet live the same mundane. Or we will be transformed. And so Paul brings these two individuals out and he says this is an example like Christ. But here is Christ and here is Timothy and here is Epaphroditus. And he's going to bring these two into their worldview. This whole thing is designed to get us to look at ourselves, our selves, as we reflect Christ. I want to challenge you with three things real quick that will help us to think about living by faith that are going to really reflect a Christ who is crucified and brought to life, resurrected and restored, exalted high above all things. I want us to recognize that if there is no pressure, if there is no challenge in our life, in our witness of faith, then there, there probably is no heat. There's no energy. I mean, we just got finished watching March Madness, didn't we? We, we? we saw these teams as they would come to the final moments and the coach would gather the team and he'd say, okay, we've got just a few seconds left. And the team would just sit there and think, well, we do have some possibilities. This might be a great... No! They were fired up. And those that weren't playing, they churned to the fans and they're like, come on, let's go! They got involved. They were excited about the message that they were about at that moment. If there is no challenge, if there is no pressure, then maybe we don't have any heat. Maybe we don't have any involvement in this game. Have you ever thought of that? That where you are in this world, where we are in this world might be so comfortable and easy and and simple is because we're playing a pretty lame game of Christianity. If this is our Christ, and this is our message, we're missing it. Some of us are afraid to face a little pressure of the world for the greatness of Christ. So I will face these challenges. And I will bring energy and excitement, motivation that will encourage others around you, around me. If there's no fear, then maybe there's no faith. Oftentimes in our 
spiritual walk. We want to believe that, that God's just going to go ahead of us, that, that everything will be smoothed out, that our way will be made clear. There will be no challenges or obstacles in our way. But where there is faith, there's still going to be a moment of fear. There, there has to be a decision that I'm stepping out into something unknown. I am going to live by faith means that I may not have all the answers already assigned to me. I may not have all the resources that I think I need, but I believe that this is where God is leading me. I see this opportunity. I know that they are in need, and so therefore I will go to work. Where there is no faith, where there is no fear, perhaps there is no faith. So I will walk confidently into the unknown, into the different, even into those moments where I have to walk alone. Paul is challenging us to look at our lives. And number three, I want to encourage us. If there is no cost, there is no reward. If what we are looking at to do is so simple and mundane and routine, it doesn't really cost anything, it won't really require much of your time, then it probably will not result in anything significant on the other side. Paul is calling us to see Christ who gave everything. Paul is calling us to see Epaphroditus who risked his life to minister. And if we don't see the greatness of God in the life of Christ, then our life can become blah, mundane, and lukewarm. Listen to what Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 5. In your relationship with one another. In your relationship with one another. in your relationship with one another. Have this mind of Christ. I don't know how many times I've read that verse, read this chapter, and I walk away thinking, what Paul is saying is, Matt, you just need to think more like Christ. Matt, you just need to, to feel it in your heart a little bit more like Christ. Matt, just internalize this. But no, what he's saying is in your relationships with one another, in your actions with one another, in your words to one another, act like Christ, speak like Christ, involve like Christ, serve like Christ, be obedient like Christ. When you are interacting with one another. That's not just right here at this moment in our worship service. That's daily. That's regularly. That's over and over and over again so that you can be like Epaphroditus who risked his life, who continues to serve, who's involved in this man's life over and over and over again. But I'm afraid that sometimes our modern day church looks more like just a gathering where we pass one another, where we don't involve our lives with one another. And we miss this in our relationship with one another. Have this mindset as Christ Jesus, who being the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself. He became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalts him to the highest place. And he gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess or acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of of our Father, God and Father. That's what's going to happen. That is what will be true for all people. Why don't we start right here and right now? 
in this opportunity to praise and proclaim, to unify and connect. Let this attitude be in you as you connect with one another. This church in Philippi, you could just imagine the stories that could be told. As you're standing around, as you're, you're gathering for a fellowship, you meet some individual and you hear that he is the warden at the local prison. And he starts to tell you about a few years ago. There was that big earthquake. You remember that? And he was so frightened about his life, about his prisoners and, and all that was going on. He goes in and, and he finds... This man, Paul, still where he's supposed to be. He could have been running free, but he showed an example of Christ. Now, Paul, when he is writing back to this church, could have told them about the greatness of God, but instead of sharing that moment, he reminds them of these people that are in his life, that are in their lives. These two bookends reflect who we are as we magnify Christ Jesus. May our lives be changed. May we recognize and proclaim the life that others are living like Christ among us. And may this world see a difference in us. For the world will know that we are His disciples when we love one another. Let's sing this song as a word of encouragement of a promise that we are going to live faithfully this week. Let our light shine amongst one another that Christ will be glorified and the world will pay attention. Let's stand together and sing this song. Lord, take my life. May